mammals, um, there are two special rooms uh, that are under controlled environmental conditions. Um, this is called the bone room, where all the large uh, uh, skeletal and skulls uh, of large body species are housed. So the whales, uh, the elephants, the bears, uh, various pinnipeds, uh, marine mammals, hippopotamus, uh, rhinoceros, uh, all that kind of material is in here. Two floors straight down below us is what we call the fur room. So the furs that have been tanned for the most part that belong to most of these uh, skulls in here are housed downstairs. Wombats, monkeys, Komodo dragon, beavers, capybara, the world's largest rodent. Tastes like chicken, arctic fox, coyotes over here, mountain lions, tiger, snow leopard, lynx. This is a wolverine. If you haven't, that's a sea otter. The rationale behind both the bone room and the fur room is those cases are $1,000 a piece, so you don't use one to store an elephant skull or a caribou hide. So all of the big specimens uh, with the tanned hides like this red kangaroo um, are stored down here and like for the uh, bone room uh, it's kept at a cooler constant temperature. So a lot of these specimens were preserved in the same way that those mouse skins were that I showed you up above. So their skin is stripped off, they're stuffed with cotton, wires have been put in the feet and the tail and they've been pinned out to uh, um, you know, to dry. Most of the kind of what we call mesocarnivores, the intermediate sized uh, animals and anything above, the skins are stripped off and then they're tanned, you know, by professional furriers. Uh, we don't get uh, very many of these kinds of specimens anymore and they're not used uh, as much as they used to be used, but they're used for very interesting and novel um, ways today that ways that were not even thought about uh, you know when they were collected so the most common uses of material like this now is for uh, to look at uh, environmental con contaminants so we have material collected uh, before the release of uh, various um, uh, environmental contaminants uh, heavy metals or even pesticides in the environment you can take hair or skin samples from these specimens uh, that were collected before that compared to specimens today and look at um, heavy metal load at that kind of natural background uh, uh, level as a compared to what uh, populations are experiencing today. Uh, and so that's what I said before is that one of the one of the goals of maintaining a collection like this uh, is to maintain as much as you can not just for the purpose that it can be used today, but uh, trying to anticipate what purposes it might be used as techniques become available into the future. This is, um, is a pig called a babarusa uh, from Indonesia, where the males, their upper tusks uh, are elevated and, and uh, scope over the uh, top of the skull. It's, used to entice young ladies, <laughs> young lady pigs that is. Right.